I don't want people to think that we don't just clean video games here. We clean a lot of different things, including DVDs. So I have my DVD copy of Snatch here, the Guy Ritchie film. And I have Scratch X 2.0 Fine Blemish and Scratch Remover. That's for cars. And I'm going to show you guys how to clean a DVD using the same method. So you can see this DVD is a little scratched. I think it plays. I'm pretty sure it plays, but we want to get rid of some of the scratches. So we're going to go through here and we're going to use... Well, that one looks real nice. We're going to go through here and we're going to use... Car scratch remover. This is very much just regular old car scratch remover. I've actually had a lot of luck finding this in a ton of different countries, too. Regular old car scratch remover to clean up a disc. A DVD, no less. A DVD movie. Or a movie DVD. Whichever you want to call it. If you've watched any of my other cleaning videos, you'll know this method pretty well, but I want to make sure that you guys understand this works for a lot of different stuff. Car scratch remover is going to be a little bit more watery than regular plastic scratch remover or the scratch removers that you see me use in some other different situations. So you can see scratches pretty much everywhere along here. Same rules apply. I put way too much on here. That's all right, though, we'll work it in. So with car scratch remover, I like to spread it out a little bit, get a good even base going. And then depending on how liquidy it is, like this is pretty liquidy, depending on how liquidy it is, I'll let it sit for a second so that it can dry up. It gives me a little bit more grit. You're gonna get a lot of polish on your hands. So wear gloves, especially with car scratch remover, it's gonna be a lot more watery. Same process, you're just doing circles all the way around. Try and stay away from the center. And that's the problem with the watery stuff is that you can get it in the center ring a little too much. That's all right. If we have to, there's a way to get it out of there but it should be fine. And then as you go, just clean up the excess because you don't want to be dealing with the excess when you're trying to focus on polishing. So wipe it up, change around the cloth, whatever you need to. And then just work your way around in a circular pattern. Same rules apply. What does that mean? Well, it means this might take two tries. This might take three tries. This might take 10 tries. It really depends on the pressure that you're applying overall, how much you're pushing down. It also depends on how much polish you're using on any spot in particular. Depends on how much rotation you're doing, how scratched the surface is. So how many times is this going to take? Let's say on a DVD, how many times is this going to take? Well, it depends. Each time that I'm polishing this, I'm removing a little bit more material every single time. So I've had people say, well, you know, I, I did it, you know, three times and I didn't see a change. Or I polished it four times and I didn't see a change. And that number really doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter because it can vary. And depending on how much force you're putting behind it and how much polish you're using each time you go, it's really going to change. It's kind of like... Um, if you're painting a house, you know, how much paint you use on a single spot is going to matter, but also how dry the paint is, how well mixed up it is, how good the brush is. There's just a lot of different things. So it, it takes eyeballing it to look at it and figure out, okay, do I need to do a little more pressure? Do I need to do a little more, you know, this, that, and the other? And it takes practice. This, I'm doing this on a DVD. I don't know how much this DVD costs. It, it's probably 3 or $4. One of the things you can do if you want to start to get into this is go get old CDs, old DVDs, polish them using the methods that I show on here, and then look at what you're doing and compare it 
to how it looked before. Take a before and after picture and just get a good idea of what it is that you did with each pass. That's really the only way that you're going to be able to start to see the differences and understand how you personally, as a polisher, are polishing things. And how much material you're going to remove. And then it comes down to how much do you want to polish? Do you want to get it back working? Do you want it to look perfect? That kind of thing. CDs are a great way to start because most CDs are going to be pretty scratched. And visually, you'll be able to tell right away, oh, I've removed some scratches. Okay, so I'm going to keep going because I've removed some scratches. And then you go and you remove a little bit more material each time. And it's going to look better each time. DVDs, it's a little harder because the DVDs aren't necessarily going to look terrible. I mean, some will look terrible, absolutely. But you might have to test it out and see. You, know, you might have to polish it a couple of times and test it. Do I know how many times this is going to take to get it working? No, because I didn't test it beforehand, so it might have already worked from the beginning. I don't know. So there's still a lot of scratches. I can see a scratch right there. Okay. I can see a couple of scratches right there. But I'm going to do one more round of scratch remover on the whole surface. I'm going to coat the entire surface just like that. Okay. I'm going to polish it until it stops being liquidy and I'm going to polish it until it starts to dry up a little bit. So just me going in circles just like this. This this Migwars has such a weird smell to it. It kind of smells like a, a cleaner almost. Like it smells like a carpet cleaner. Which is kind of interesting. I believe this is the one with the silica compound too though. So it will add a little bit of shine to it. Okay. Now once that's all done, you take your microfiber cloth, and you're just gonna wipe the surface down. Just like that. We're gonna look at the disc. See how it looks. Okay. I have a nasty habit of wanting to bring things up like right to my face. Okay. So that looks, got a couple scratches still there. Got a couple scratches still there, but this looks 10 times better than it did before. I know I have a little scratch right here, so I can address that one directly. And the way that we do that Oh, that's way too much. It's the other problem with watery stuff. So the scratch is right there. Let me leave a little fingerprint. I lost it. There it is. We'll focus just on that little scratched area. Same rules. Just rotation. And again, you can see I a lot of the videos that I do, I use plastic polish, I use Novus, but I want you guys to understand that you can use anything. It's the method and the process of how you do it. I shouldn't say anything. Well, I shouldn't say anything. Any kind of polish, any kind of scratch remover or polish can be used and then it's really just the method of how you apply it taking your time understanding how you do it this is not something that you know if i try off a new method or something if i'm like oh i'm gonna try this new polish i'm not gonna try the new polish on something that i really care about i'm gonna put the polish on on something that you know i know can clean up or something that's maybe not a $300 game or whatever. Something like a sports game or something that I'm like, oh, I know I can clean this one up. Or I know I can resurface it if I need to. 
and and you got to practice. This is absolutely something that you have to just work on getting better at. It's not like, here's this one simple trick that'll get your DVDs to play again. It's something that takes practice. So you go out and you find, you know, one dollar DVDs, fifty cent DVDs that are scratched. I'll tell you what, if you go to most used DVD stores, if you go to a used DVD store and say, hey, do you have any cheap scratched DVDs? A lot of times they will. A lot of times they'll have some that they'll say, you know, it's not worth it to have us clean these up. I got, was this the stack? Yeah, it's the stack. I got these given to me. Need for Speed Underground 2, King Kong, and NFL 2K2. I got these given to me by a store um, because... This one's kind of funny. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Half of it's scratched, half of it's not. I got those from a store um, because they said, well, it's not worth it to us to go through and resurface it and put the time in and everything because then we're going to turn around and sell it for, you know, 50 cents a dollar. So it's not worth it. So they hang out. You know, so get stuff like that. I'm actually going to clean those. Each of those is going to get turned into a video. Get stuff like that. Clean them up. Practice it, see what it looks like after you've done your work and after you've done your polishing, and then see if it looks better, see if it makes sense. Track your progress. So again, I don't know if the camera's necessarily picking it up, but we definitely got rid of those bigger scratches. There's still a lot of surface scratches. Of course there's still a lot of surface scratches. Um, but that's okay. You know, we know that that's okay because we're just cleaning this up. It's just a DVD. It's of Snatch. It's a good movie, too. Um, but since we're here, and since this is looking good, we're going to use another car polish of sorts, but this is more for headlights. This is also Migwer's scratch remover, um, but it's a different one. It's a lot thinner. And I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up necessarily, but let's see if we can get rid of a lot of those really tiny little scratches. The super fine ones. We're going to go through. This one's got a little bit more um, silica in it which means it's gonna leave a little bit more of a film. And I'll do a full video on this one, but again, I'm, ju I'm just using car scratch removers here. There's no plastic polish, there's no, you know, custom acrylic polish or anything. This is literally just stuff that you get. I think I, I got the one at AutoZone, I think I got both of them at AutoZone, or I got the one at AutoZone and the other one at Advanced Auto Parts or something. Um, that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. Okay. So that's all nice and filmed up on there. We'll take a clean microfiber cloth because we're trying to keep it somewhat decent. We're just going to wipe out from the center to the edges. And keep an eye on any scratches that get built up as you do it. And this thing's going to look fantastic. Don't press too hard. You just want to use the the weight and pressure of the cloth. Now look at that. You can still see there's a fingerprint right there that I just put on. <laughs> another fingerprint. And another fingerprint. Gotta stop touching it. So there you go. So again, you can see my toolbox. You can see whatever that is. You can see my hand. It looks great. Okay, so we used this is a DVD, car scratch remover, headlight restoration liquid, and we were able to restore a DVD. You don't have to have custom fancy things. You don't have to, you know, the only thing that really takes a while is how long do you polish it? So when you put the polish on here, when you're using this kind of a polish or something, how long do you need to put the polish on? 
that's really the one that you got to figure out for yourself is how long do you need with this kind of thing to get these kind of results. Buy cheap DVDs. You know, find a cheap DVD, take a picture of it beforehand, start to polish, do a couple rounds, and then look at it and see how it looks afterwards, right? You know what Nemesis means. This is also a good movie. Um, but I've been going through and I've been cleaning up all of my DVDs just because it's a fantastic way to practice, okay? So this is literally all you need. And honestly, you don't even need headlight restoration. You just need a couple microfiber towels, which you can get any auto parts store, any, any home goods store, anything else like that. You can get a stack of microfiber towels. It's car scratch remover. This stuff, it's crazy where I've found people are able to get this stuff. Denmark, um, the Netherlands, Japan, people were able to get this stuff. This is in a lot of different places. And it doesn't have to be Scratch X 2.0. It can literally just be any car polish that's going to look like that. Any any car scratch remover that's going to be white. It's going to be kind of watery. If it says that it's clear coat safe, that's always good because you know it's going to be a little bit more watery. But you're also not going to be as aggressive of a polish. But honestly, if if there is if you have a scratch remover... And you're like, I wonder if this is a good one to clean discs with. Drop it in the comments. We can go through it and I can show you how we look up the different ingredients to see what's in there to see how it'll do to clean up your discs. You know what I mean? So this is literally all you need to clean up a DVD, to clean up audio CDs, anything else. This is it. You know, you can get the polishers, you can get all the fancy stuff. There's really not a lot of need for that. Um, and this is a good way to practice. And as you practice with your scratch remover, on some DVDs and you start to understand what method works best for you if it's one or two tries and you got to polish it off to get one or two tries. This one wasn't even that scratched, honestly. More scratched ones, it might take 20, 30 tries or it might take two tries and you're pressing down a little bit more or it might take more polish and you let it dry. Experiment. That's really the point of this video is just to encourage everyone to experiment, try different methods, get some CDs and some DVDs. It takes practice. I think in my videos, I'm like, oh, you just polish it once. It's good to go. And and that's not necessarily the case. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of understanding. I still, and I get comments from people that say, I used a microfiber towel and now I have surface scratches. I still get surface scratches too. The microfiber towel still scratches the surface sometimes. I'm pressing too hard when I'm wiping off. Or there's not enough compound on there. You see that I left a little compound on and I wiped it off. If I were to take just this dry microfiber towel on this dry disc and wipe it, I don't know if the disc will pick it up. You can see that I put some scratches on there. Like that's how that works. So, so yeah, just it's all about the kind of the touch and the how you approach it and everything. This method works for DVDs. This method works for CDs. GameCube discs, Wii discs, Wii U discs, whatever you got. Video game disc, it's the same thing. This is the same method every single time. Works great on DVDs. You can use all the plastic polishes in the world that we have for um, video games and everything else. You can use those all you want to, or you can just get yourself a cheap bottle of Scratch 2.0. I think this was like $4. Irvine, California. Don't eat it. And it's got petroleum distillates. So, part of the reason why it's watery, part of the reason why it works on plastic. At any rate, how to clean a DVD using car scratch remover and a little bit of headlight restoration liquid. And you get some pretty fantastic results. A couple little scratches here and there. We know that. I could go back and I could polish this three or four more times, take my time and get rid of all of those. Just depends on what it is you're trying to accomplish. Until next time, I'm going to keep making these videos. I got some CDs I need to make and everything else. Just showing how to clean up your discs, how to get them looking nice and fresh. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. I absolutely try to answer every single question and help walk people through the problems they might have. Until next time, I got a big old stack of DVDs and I got a clean disc two of this as well. Until next time, I'm going to keep cleaning. Thanks, guys. See ya.